Tuesday morning, heading now to Tel Aviv for a very, very busy day. Also, I don't think I've shown my new car, the Polestar, on the vlog, so check it out. Fire, all right, let's go. Made it to Tel Aviv, found parking immediately. It's gonna be a good day. So listen, here's the thing, right? So we did like 450 episodes of the vlog pre-COVID, uh, and then we started this again. You know, my instinct is to uh, just do my thing as I was doing the whole time, but I had some thoughts about making some, uh, let's call it unique segments on the vlog. Maybe a marketing tip, I don't know, maybe startup of the week, startup of the day, I don't know. It boggles my mind how many people used to watch the vlog. So if you're watching this and you have ideas for something you'd like to see on a daily basis, I'll probably start vlogging three times a week-ish. So if there's something you wanna see on the vlog, let me know, because I'm absolutely open to adding new segments. So let me know what you think. Here we go, heading into Sirona right now, which by the way, if you've not been to Sirona, I've said this before, but Sirona is seriously awesome. You need to go to Sirona, it's beautiful. I'll show you right now. Did I or did I not tell you that Sirona is beautiful? If you have not been to Sirona, you have not been to Tel Aviv. In the radius of about a mile from here, you have every single tech company, every single leading VC. Behind me is Lightspeed right there, Tom Morgenstern. In that building over there, the tall building, every single tech company, literally every single leading tech corporation is in that building. And here is where I do all my meetings. Bigger Cafe, every single day for years. Okay, so this is not my typical startup meeting, to say the least, but this guy has such a phenomenal story, specifically what he does, uh, that I just felt like I had to turn the camera on. I might have twisted his arm a little bit, or a lot. <laughs> He's like, where are right, anyway, you? You'll, you'll understand in a second. Who are you, what's your name? So, my name is Svi Goldman. I'm the CEO and director of Taharenu. Taharenu. Right. Had, had I known Hill was doing this, I would have worn a nicer shirt. Okay. What are you kidding me? Like, wait, hold on. Let's, let's rewind a little bit. Where are you from? So I'm originally from Connecticut, okay. um, Stanford to be exact. Uh, I'm living, in, living in Modi'in now and, and how long? Uh, loving it. How long have you been here? We were back in 2018. Back? So we were here in 2011. We made Aliyah. We were here for three years, and then I went back to Stanford. Got it. My job was over there. In 2018, we cut ties with my job over there, which was in the finance field. I was working at a fund in Connecticut for many years prior to that. And you realized it was time to make an impact. It's time to make an impact, and in order to live here, we'd have to cut ties with the old firm. It, it. it just wasn't viable. Got it. All right, so what do you do? What is, what is this organization? So ever since we moved here in 2018, I took a fairly significant career shift into the world of not-for-profit. I now direct a women's health not-for-profit that deals with issues of women's health, reproductive health, areas centered on fertility, recurrent pregnancy loss, um, and providing education and information within the Jewish world and the world at large to everybody for all issues related towards building a family. So let me, let me try to understand this. You know, a woman has a miscarriage. She'll call you for what exactly? A woman's having multiple miscarriages and wants to understand what's going on. She may not, may or may not have access to, you know, doctors. Um, what's going on? What do you mean readily? what's going on? Like, medically, like what well, Yeah, like why she can either hold the pregnancy or in some cases why she can't even conceive. But when it comes to miscarriages, you have some people that will have one miscarriage or two in their lifetime. And miscarriages are a lot more common than people may think. Yeah. It's probably, I don't know, somewhere between 10 and 18 percent of pregnancies result uh, in miscarriages worldwide. In 2023? In 2023. Wow, that's crazy statistic. Yeah, and unfortunately it's not talked about as much and people that do suffer miscarriages oftentimes feel a stigma, thinking it's something they did. Yeah. Uh, their, their diet, their health, right. their Jeez. genetics. So, so miscarriages is one thing. Give me another example of stuff that you deal with. A person who can conceive. Fertility. Or within the within you know the world of, of people that are Shomer Tarot HaMishpacha, Let's say somebody who can't get to the mikvah. They're having staining that goes on for, um, you know, in incessant staining for months on end. Something that the medical world didn't see as a medical issue because very minor staining is not something that your doctor 
out in Johannesburg is going right. to see as a medical issue because it's not. Right. You know, if you're in a primarily Jewish area like Brooklyn or parts of New Jersey, doctors there may address it because they're sensitive to right. the Jewish right. issues, right. They're, they're but globally they're, they're not. Right. 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 Um, and so, would, I mean, again, I'm, I'm trying to understand one point here. You know, if, if a woman, like a, you know, miscarriage, she can't conceive, they'll call you primarily for what? For emotional support? No. For, so they will call the Tyreno hotline. Um, and just a, a word on the Tyreno hotline. The Tyreno hotline is a hotline that is available Sunday through Thursday from 10 in the morning till 11 at night. It's a global hotline. So we have local numbers in, in 11 countries. Wow. Advisors taking calls in, in nine different languages. Amazing. And we are, um, we get somewhere between four and 5,000 phone calls a month. Wow. Um, 2022 wow. closed out with about 47,000 phone calls wow. coming into the hotline. Yeah. Where, where's, the, where's the main chat? How do people hear about it? So people hear about us a lot through word of mouth, a lot through educational seminars that we do in different communities around the world. Wow. We also train a lot of Kala teachers, Rabbanim, Hassan teachers, doctors. We just came back from Toronto where we did a seminar for, for doctors locally. And you're, by the way, you're the CEO of the organization? I'm the CEO of the organization. I'm not on the medical side of it, but we have a very large team that travels the world. And our mission is to get to every medical conference related to the topic of reproductive health, wow. such that we could bring the latest innovations back to the community. Nice. And we do that in, in two or three ways. Number one is through our hotline. We disseminate that information through our hotline. Right. We also have a newsletter that reaches about 27,000 people a month. Um, with with an open rate of about 36, 37 percent. That's unheard of. Yes. Wow. And, and that's because it's all what we would call topless. It's it's facts, figures, practical. information, practical information. Right. It's not a sponsored or right. newsletter filled with fluff. Um, and the truth is, many doctors and nurses benefit from this because they don't have the luxury of traveling to Copenhagen for a meeting right. Right. or a seminar that's going on in Mumbai right. or in Calgary. So, so um, but wait. we make it our business every month or every right. other week to be at these seminars. So, yeah, you were going to say you said, three, you said three things. Right. So one is is through our hotline directly. When I say our hotline, we also see couples in person or over Zoom, but that's for more complex cases right. um, where we provide case management. The second way is through education, to the doctors, to the te you know, custom teachers, college teachers, rabbis, right. Right. medical professionals. Right. And the third is through is through our newsletter. Right. Okay. Got it. Um, got it. Those are the three ways that we disseminate that information. So if someone's get. watching this and they want to get in touch, what's the best way to do it? What's the website? So the website is tahirinu.com. T a h a r e i n u dot com. T a h a r e i n u dot com. Okay. On there you'll see. I'll put, you the, know, I'll put the address right here, people. Yeah. You'll find a link towards the hotline and you know you'll see about 12 different countries or you know 13 different countries 11 different numbers however many Amazing. it is today so let's just that you can let's call. just say this totally free of charge oh that's another included thing. all case management Amazing. whether you, you have a one time call or whether you're a couple family that we're working with for years right. we just had a couple in Bay Chemish married 19 years they had 17 miscarriages i don't want to give too much information cuz they had a big kiddish within the last 2 months wow. And they came to us after close to 18 years of marriage with four shopping bags full of files. Not just from Israeli hospitals, they were at Cornell, they were at Columbia. We sat with them, we went through it. It turns out that there was a innovative process that they're executing in only four countries around the world today. In London, Japan, Germany, and in one of the locales in Central America. We got them hooked up with this location in London on Harley Street. We handheld them through the process within a year after close to 18 miscarriages unbelievable by the way there i'm assuming you're familiar with the femtech industry in Israel. yes okay all right let me just let's just say one more thing and that is that we didn't come here today to talk about that we can't say what we did come here to talk about because it's too early but let's just say if your plan that we're here to talk about comes to fruition it's kind of one of those things like well, i didn't know anyone else think of this before revolutionary it could be an absolute game changer more on that soon thank you for agreeing to do this interview man it only took me twisting your arm five minutes. No, I'm kidding, kidding. It's great, and uh, if I can help with anything, you know, both in terms of the idea that we're talking about, but also in terms of your organization. I will say, if this is going to get anywhere, because I did tell Hillel he would have to run the final edit, but if it's to get anywhere, it has to include the fact that the first person I thought of for this initiative to reach out to was I Hillel. That. I appreciate it. So that. thank you. All right, man, we're going to make some magic happen. Thanks. I am with 
one of the top car YouTubers in the world, this dashingly handsome individual. Not in the world, in the UK, maybe. Whatever, in the UK, in the world, whatever. But I don't care about him. I mean, he's interesting, but what's more interesting is what we're having for lunch. Check this out. Oh my God. Oh my God. Dang. Right. Okay. This good looking guy by my side right here is someone I've been following online for a very long time. One might say he's living my dream. Mm. Well, I don't want to say that because tech is my dream, but my secondary dream is definitely what this guy does. Who are you? What's your name? My name is Mark. My Instagram and YouTube handle is AAAMF. And my passion and hobby is supercars. Yes. And I put to fill in on every day. And he puts fill in so on every day. So we have something in common there. I love that. Wait, but tell me how this all got started. When did you start with the supercars? I was in banking for years and years and years. And when I left, I love banking, but it uses a very different part of the brain. And when I left banking, I decided I wanted to do something creative. And at the time, I had six supercars. And you I always was- Always cars? Always. always. My dad was in the car business. My grandfather was in the car business. So my dad used to come home with car magazines. And at 10 years old, I was looking at car magazines. So I've always loved cars. And what happened was a financial crisis happened in 2008. And car prices were really low because of the financial crisis. And you couldn't go out and buy property because it was really di difficult to get a loan on property at the right, time. Right. So I thought, where am I going to put my money? So I put my money into cars. That's not a very good investment, is it? Between 2009 and 2017, the best investment you could have made Why? Doesn't it depreciate was all classic the time? cars. Oh, classic cars. Classic okay. cars. Got it, got it, got it. So okay. I, bought, I bought modern classic cars as uh, the financial markets picked up again and interest rates remained low. People wanted to buy assets and one of those assets people were buying were modern classic, classic cars and Got supercars. It. Got it. So they had a huge, huge um, appreciation Got over it. those years. Okay, so right now, your biggest channel is YouTube, the most, most engagement? I have a lot of interaction on my Instagram story with people all around the world talking about cars. Right. And um, the YouTube channel has 82,000 subscribers and we film all around the world. Okay, so give me some, give me just name drop. What are some cars that you've driven? It'd be easier to tell you which cars I haven't oh, driven. La Ferrari? The only car I, I've been in a La Ferrari, I haven't driven one. Okay, so that's for me, that, that, that's My the... My friend didn't trust me to drive it, that's Russell. Four million bucks, right? Four million more expensive? Uh, he now? sold it for 2.2 million pounds. Okay. And they're now 3 million pounds. Okay. Um, Which is what, $4 million? Oh my God. Three and a half, four million dollars, okay. yeah. I mean, for, for me, LaFerrari is... Like LaFerrari is the pinnacle. There's nothing it better. Is, I'll tell you why. The LaFerrari doesn't feel like a car. It's like a spaceship. It feels like a spaceship. 100%. It feels it like so a spaceship. beautiful. It's like a it's piece incredible. of art. It's incredible. Beautiful. It's incredible. And that's why they're appreciating. Okay. Well, another reason they're rare. appreciating... Well, another reason they're appreciating is because Ferrari have said that if you want to get the latest Ferrari, you have to own a LaFerrari. Right, I've heard so that. People are buying the LaFerrari. Okay, so what Lambos have you driven? Ventador? I've driven every Lambo there is. Really? Yeah. What do you think of the Euros? Sorry, it's a Volkswagen. I could not agree more. Okay. It's an Audi. What's the best Lambo you've ever driven? Uh, so I used to own a Lamborghini Performante Spider oh, wow. in matte pearl white with gold wow. wheels. Oh, wow. The only problem, that's my favorite Lamborghini, but I prefer the coupe because it's got more structural rigidity. Okay. It feels tauter. It's a much, much better car. If you think about cars that when they're designed, they're designed as, most cars are designed as coupes, right. and then they chop the roof off, right. so they lose some of their structural rigidity. Okay. And the Lamborghini doesn't have a carbon fiber tub like a McLaren. That's so my next, a, that was my next question. So yeah. McLaren has a carbon fiber tub, so if you take the roof off, it doesn't matter. With a Lambo, it loses a lot of its... I hear. Um, What's your favorite McLaren? I used to own a 650S coupe and uh, from 2015, and. That's my favorite one I've driven so far. Okay. And I've and driven every McLaren there. It's P1, I've driven a Senna. Wow. I've driven 675 LT, 765 wow. LT. Senna's really rare, no? The Senna is amazing, but the problem with McLaren is, well, they use the same engine in all of their cars. I don't like McLarens. I really, I actually I've do not driven like one. McLaren. I have not driven like that. Oh, well, there you go. I, don't, I just don't like it. If I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna spend that much money, I'm not gonna buy a McLaren. The nice okay. thing about McLaren is it has a carbon tub. So it's the, the technology is light years ahead of everything else. The engine is incredible. The problem is they don't all work. Right, okay, so so wait, we got Lambo, we got McLaren. What's your best Ferrari besides the La Ferrari? Top Ferrari you've driven. I used to own a Challenge Stradale. That's probably my favorite Ferrari. Not the super fast? So the Challenge Stradale has a V8 five cylinder engine, which screams when it gets above 5,000 RPM. The noise is absolutely incredible. One of the best sounding engines in the world. Okay. The problem was the car's very old, 2000, 
2003, 2004, the gearbox is old technology. Right. So it was when they were transitioning from manual to PDK, dual clutch, double clutch. And so this was a single clutch. So it was basically an automated manual. Right. And it was very slow and it let down the car in my opinion. But the engine in that car is a masterpiece. The 812 Superfast, I've driven a lot. Love it. It's an amazing car, I but it's it. got this very, very long bonnet. Yeah. And it's really a great car for places like the US, where there's big wide roads and open roads. Right. In London, I don't really like driving cars with massive long bonnets. I hear that. Okay, so wait, we said by the way, By the way, yeah. Ferrari brought out a racing version of the 812 Superfast, which is called the 812 Competizione. Right. And it's lighter, has more power. There's a review on my YouTube channel. All right. And we'll check it that out. is probably the best modern Ferrari they've made. Okay, wait, it's so insane. So we got the Lambos, we've got the McLarens, we got Ferraris. What else? What are the, what are the Porsche. top? Porsche. Right, we didn't get, we're going to get there in a second. What about Rolls? And Bentleys, you into them or not so much? I'm too young for a Rolls. Oh, you like Bentleys, the Continental? No? I don't like any of them. You don't like the Continental GT? I'm too young. Bentley Continental, dude, that's I'm fat. too young. What's the, what's, the new, uh, what's the new Bentley called that's super duper fast? The one that just came out. It has like I'm a not really into Rolls Royce or Bentleys. I've driven oh, yeah. them. I've been invited by um, Rolls Royce to go out and drive them for a day. And when my friend got married, Rolls Royce in London gave me really? a Rolls Royce for the day. That's awesome. All right, let's talk about Porsche because you're all in on Porsche. Right now, you own two Porsche. Porsche. Is it really Porsche, by the way? Yeah. Are you People sure about that? People correct me on YouTube all the time. Are you actually it's sure? It's German. It's Porsche. Are you, are you like 100% sure about that? 1,000% sure. Because I'm pretty sure I once asked someone. I met the people from Porsche okay, fine. at Goodwood Festival of Speed last I'm, month and I filmed their car right. on their stand and it's Porsche. So I'm pretty sure, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure that the R&D team in Israel who manages not the, the car business, but like the innovation business told me it's actually Porsche, but they could be wrong. Either way, you're all in on 1, Porsche. 1,000%, it's Porsche. Fine, you're all in on Porsche. Right now you own two cars. What are they? I have a GT4 RS which is the first time Porsche have put a GT3 engine into the Cayman shape. And it's 1 in and 50. It goes up. Uh, no, they're probably going to make 2,000 in total. Okay. I've, there's only 50 in the UK. In the I've UK. got one. Got it, got it, got it. And what makes it special is it the GT3 engine goes all the way up to 9,000 RPM. That cannot sound pleasant, <laughs> I guess. When I went up to 9,000 RPM for the first time. It's a Porsche right there. Yeah, it's quite rare to see a Porsche in, uh, in Israel. When I got up to 9,000 RPM for the first time, I literally... Earplugs. I, I literally did a poop in my pants. <laughs> I'm not joking. It feels like the engine's gonna break, yeah. but obviously it's not. When you come to London, I'm gonna take you out in it, and right. you won't, you'll tell me to slow down. I'm just saying, I don't do German, but let's move on. What's your other Porsche? I have a 2011 911 GT3 RS 4 litre, which was the last 997 shape, and it has a Mezga engine, which they stopped making after that, and it's basically a race car for the road. So they only made 600 in the world. Super hot car. It's probably the rarest Porsche in the world. Okay, now here's, I have one question. We, got, we have like another minute. So tell me in one minute, yeah. why you're all in on Porsche, not Ferrari, not McLaren. Why, why did you choose to go with two Porsches versus one Porsche? One Porsche, one Ferrari. Why, why are you all in a Porsche? If I had the money, I'd probably buy a Ferrari 812 Competizione. Brand new, they're 350,000 pounds in the UK. Second hand on the used market now, they're 1.5 million pounds. Wow. I would probably have one of those. But the appeal for Porsche for me is that you can drive them every day. They are, they have German engineering, right. German reliability. You can take them to a racetrack, drive them home. They really are an all-round sports car. They don't have the exotic feel of a Lamborghini or Ferrari. You wouldn't drive a Lambo. Would you drive a Lambo? I had a Lamborghini. I had one. You drove a Lambo as a car? Yeah, very flash. Yeah, I just feel like that's very, too much. Very, very flash. It's too much. I don't know. It's so, I drove in an Aventador in New York. It was crazy. Like, I can't, you can't own a car like that. Just the noise that it makes. So I, I will just say, for, for, for a weekend car, it's nice to have a Ferrari or a Lamborghini. It's yeah. nice. So you lost me a weekend car. Who has a weekend car? I don't even know that's a thing, dude. <laughs> What's a weekend car? The weekend car is the one you take out just for fun. I mean, I got it from the when context. When you wake up, you know, on a Sunday morning and you just want to go for a drive for the enjoyment of driving. Right. But that's what car passion is all about. It's not about going from A to B. It's about going from A to B the longest possible way Scenic and route. enjoying that uh, drive. I used to ride motorbikes and I did it for three and a half years and obviously they're very dangerous. When I switched out motorbikes, I realized to get off of my addiction of fast bikes, which I had to do, I had to get into fast cars. Right. And so for me and my friends, and a lot of people that follow me, we like to just go out 
and drive. I, know, I and follow not, you, dude. I see that you And like not even have a destination. You know, we will choose. A, a, I will choose a restaurant that's like an hour from London just to go for that drive because right. I enjoy the drive. Someone watching this, where's the best place to follow you? YouTube, where, where, what's, the, what's your channel? YouTube, Triple A MF. Triple A MF. 888. Shmone, 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 MF. Okay, so um, bottom line, follow you on YouTube. Your other platforms you said is what? Uh, after I have did? Instagram, which Instagram. is uh, Triple A M F, yeah, as well. And we film, we film all around the world. All right, awesome. I'm just gonna say one more thing. If you come back to Israel and you don't bring me to drive some Ferraris, we're, yeah. I'm gonna disown you. Well, I think we're going out for a drive in a week, so oh, I'll yeah. invite you along. Done. Awesome. Great to meet you, man. How's the burger, by the way? Come on. You, okay, you've had burger because you eat non-kosher, but how was the burger? I do not eat non-kosher. No, That's for Khalil. I mean, I said I eat non-kosher restaurants, restaurants in Israel because okay. they serve kosher meat. Okay, but how was the burger, though? The burger was uh, an eight out of ten. Thank you. Went up from seven and a half. Well, I think it was a nine and a half, but that's just me. Anyway, fantastic to meet you. Looking nice forward to, to hitting up some Ferraris. All right, leaving Memphis Burger with this dashingly handsome dude. Hey. This guy. His name is Brandon. Many years ago. How many years ago was it? It was long ago. It was more than like eight years Seven, ago. eight years ago. Wow. Flew me, you flew me in, right? Yeah. Flew me into New York, picked me up in the airport with some like pimped out Escalade. Basically, right. he built a startup that was kind of like Uber for the corporate world, like premium Uber kind of thing. And we hung out in New York, we had a good time. And uh, now he's building another whole platform. You want to talk about that or not so much? Uh, you not know, so much. I'm trying to keep it on a low for a different uh, reason. Whatever. He's building Instagram businesses for, for people. That, that, well, okay. I'm helping people build their business on Instagram. Love it. Love it. Somebody wants to hit you up. How do they reach you? They can reach me on Twitter. Brandon Steen. Brandon, B-R-A-N-D-O-N. Steen, S-H-T-E-I-N. T-E-I-N. Beautiful. All right, man. It was great to hang out. How was the burger? I would rate it eight and a half out of ten. But I would recommend someone go there. Um, That's a hundred percent. They're dude. they're even close to the area. Memphis Burger go. is the bomb. It is just fire. I don't care what anybody says. Seven and a half, eight and a half BS. So what is the allocation? Nine and a half. Out of how 10. much? How much allocation do you have uh, for Memphis? Burger? I don't actually totally get <laughs> the amount of business I've driven them is just insane. Anyway, dude, it was great to hang out. Pleasure, and uh, see you go. tomorrow.